In Thessalonians 5.17, St. Paul says, Be cheerful no matter what, pray all the time. Thank God no matter what happens. This is the way God wants you who belongs who belong to Jesus Christ to live. Prayer is a way we can talk to God so that we can start having a relationship with him now as a child. We want you to find a special place at your home for your milestone bowl. Put it where it will remind you to pray all the time and to thank God no matter what happens. During our milestone class after worship, you also have the chance to make a milestone um, prayer pillow to take with you. We want this prayer pillow as a reminder of the blessings that come when we pray to God. And as you develop that prayer life together as a family, we also want you to know that you're not alone. People of First Lutheran, will you promise to pray for, support, and encourage these children and their parents? If so, please say, we will. And parents, I invite you to place the prayer stone in your child's hands and say to them, you can always talk to God. And parents, I invite you to place a hand on your child as we pray together. Dear God, bless and strengthen each of these children as they grow in faith and learn to talk to you. Daily walk with them and guide them, we pray. Bless also their moms and dads, their parents, that as they pray together, you draw them closer to one another and to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I invite you to join me in giving these friends a round of applause at this time. And you may be seated. Samuel chapter 3 verses 1 through 10. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord, where the ark of God was. Then the Lord called, Samuel, Samuel, and he said, Here I am, and ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son, lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Our second reading for today is Psalm chapter 139, verses 1 through 6 and 13 through 18. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in behind and before and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. 
For it was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works that I know very well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was being made in secret, intricately woven in the depths of the earth. Your eyes beheld my unformed substance. In your book were written all the days that were formed for me, when none of them as yet existed. How weighty to me are your thoughts, O God! How vast is the sum of them! I try to count them. They are more than the sand. I come to the end. I am still with you. The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. Please stand as you're able for the gospel acclamation. <clears throat> Gospel according to John chapter 1. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now, Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, We have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the son of God. You are the king of Israel. Jesus answered, do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Please join us in singing Drawn to the Light. Drawn to the light of God. 
God, help us hear a word from you, spoken to us already in Jesus, the gift that is a once-for-all gift. And help us, too, to hear your voice in our hearts and our togetherness today for how you are calling us forward and forward toward you. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. In the January edition of the Cooperative Connection out of South Dakota, I just read an article about the Jewel Cave. Have anyone, has anyone here been to the Jewel Cave in the Black Hills before? It's quite the place, though there's probably more to it than we could ever guess. Jewel Cave is in the depths of the Black Hills, and it's a vast, immense domain of underground caves renowned, renowned for their untouched beauty. If you want to go there, you can find the National Monument west of Custer. If you want to explore in it, there are 219 miles of cave that have been mapped out by volunteers over the last 100 or so years. But if you want to go on a mapping expedition with the National Parks Service and help move the exploration forward, perhaps you can help make inroads into the anticipated 14,000 miles of cave that could be there. Yes, according to barometric airflow studies, the cave could be in its smallest crevices, yet connected 14,000 miles long. Fantastic. Limitless is the adjective that comes to my mind. Limitless. And limitless is also the adjective that comes to my mind when I think of the invitation to know God. The invitation to be a friend of God, to follow, and to respond to God's invitation through Jesus, come and see. Come and see and be amazed at all there is that a lifetime could not fully explore because the one we're in relation to is God, the eternal. In the verses just before this story, Jesus begins calling the disciples. You can read it yourself. Jesus says, follow me, but the invitation when they say, well, where are you staying? The invitation immediately is, come and see, come and see. So in our scripture, when they start inviting others, they say, come and see, come and see. There's something experiential here that I want to discuss. When they talk about come and see, and we hear come and see, and I say it's experiential, we can follow the path through the Gospel of John, just in the high points, and hear some of the things we may be invited to see and experience in a friendship, in faith with God. In chapter 6, Jesus says, I am the bread of life. In Jesus, we find nourishment in this relationship with God. In chapter 8, Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. 
also part of the invitation. In chapter 10, Jesus says, I'm the good shepherd. Invited into that type of relationship also, care, protection, guidance. In chapter 14, we hear Jesus say, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And Jesus is saying, find the way to connection with the eternal through me. And he starts saying it while here on earth. Now let's talk about while here on earth. On Wednesday, I developed a little timeline because then on Wednesdays, I work with confirmation students. But I thought it fits for you as well to put this in perspective and to talk about the unique message and invitation in Jesus. I want us to draw an imaginary timeline of about 4,000 years of time. We're going to call this right here in line with the cross and say this is about the time Jesus lived. Right here, we're going to say 1 to 30 or so. It, it's a little different, say scholars, but for our purposes, 1 to 30. And on out there, that's where we are, 2024, just to get perspective. And the whole New Testament fits in about this 1 to 100. Just this little time, a hundred years here. Well, if we go to 2024, we're just going to put it right about here, the end of the chairs, about 2,000 years out. We hope there's many more years that direction too, but 2024, in these 2,000 years, lots of things have happened. A couple big ones, just about 1,500 we had Martin Luther, the reformer, 500 years ago, and about at 1,000 right here, this was when the East and West churches split, the Orthodox and the Catholic, the first split of congregations of a church. Back here with Jesus, 0 to 30, and then the New Testament writings just in that next 50 to 80, 90 years writing about Jesus. But we have 2,000 more years this way. This is the whole Old Testament. If we just stop with the dates that scholars are fairly in agreement on, about 1850 BCE, here we have Abraham and Isaac their Abraham and Sarah and their children and descendants. Oh, there are chapters before this in the Bible, but they don't attempt to give dates. In our denomination, we don't attempt to date creation. So that's way that way that the Bible talks about creation, talks about the flood with Noah. That's not dated. So right now we're just doing these 4,000 years Here's Abraham. You could also put, and this I talked about with the kids, King David about right here. King David, many psalms written with King David at about a thousand. And right here is Moses. You know the story of Moses. About 1250 or so BCE, they think there was that exodus out of Egypt, the giving of the Ten Commandments. So from 1850 BCE all the way to 2024, we have about 4,000 years that I want you just to take in mind for a second and then say, here, this life of Jesus. My goodness, we focus on that a lot. Every Sunday we come back to a gospel reading or we talk about Jesus. This is central to God's plan for all time, Jesus. And God says in the writings of the New Testament and through those writers, God wants to be known through Jesus and Jesus' death and resurrection. If God could have done a work of salvation, a work of saving in any way, why is it God chose a human and then started issuing invitations through that human to be part of the life of God? 
we need to say that come and see in Jesus says more than we can ever imagine for it invites us into the whole story of God. We can even back up and just put a little theological picture and say, huh, there again is the Trinity. If you think of creation and God the Father, and when we confess God the Father, I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator, creation, that direction, the Son of God in Jesus, and in Jesus sending the Spirit to carry us on and to keep calling people on to today, we have a picture of the Trinity. And the middle of the story, the center of it all, is the invitation. Come and see. Come and see. In light of this long, varied story, this picture of God, if you will, working in history, the invitation to come and see is fantastic. It is hard to fathom that God wants us to know him, and God sent a savior to issue that invitation. So the invitation today is to come to Jesus to follow Jesus, learn from him, and be made new. And it's not just about knowing about God. It's about knowing God and being drawn into that limitless life of God that our lifetimes could never finish exploring. Faith in Jesus is about a relationship with the God who created us, the God who came to earth for our sake, and the God who is present with us now by his Holy Spirit. Come and see. Amen. Gracious God, thank you for your kindness toward us and that you always have us in mind in your love. Thank you then also that you send us to the others around us in our lives that you also have in mind. You also love. You also have an invitation for them. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Please join us in singing My Lighthouse. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. In the silence you won't let go, in the questions your truth will hold, your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea, oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea. Sure.
Join in the confession of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. As we celebrate God embodied in human form, we also pray for God's blessings on the church, the world, and all of creation. Encourage the ministry and mission of the church, God of truth. Let the leaders of your church be trustworthy and accountable stewards. Lord, in your mercy. Delight in the goodness of your creation, God of all. Heal the world harmed by human greed. Restore those recovering from natural disaster. Protect our forests and waterways and all the creatures that live in them. Lord, in your mercy. Call the leaders of every neighborhood and nation to serve faithfully, God of wisdom. Give them visions for justice and the unity we so need. Lead them to action, O oh God in your way. Lord, in your mercy. Hold in your care any and all who suffer this day, God of compassion. You who know our inner hearts, be present with any who are oppressed, who are victims of racism or bias, and all who long for respite or restoration. Lord, in your mercy. Trust in God who raised Jesus and will also raise us in spirit and truth. We remember all who have died and are at peace among the saints. Today, especially thanking you for the life of the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., whose faithful advocacy for peace and justice continues to lead us forward. Lord, in your mercy. Your Knowing the Holy Spirit intercedes for us, we offer these prayers and the silent prayers of our hearts in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray the prayer Jesus teaches us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share the peace with one another. And you may be seated. And at this time, we'll receive the morning's offering. And I remind children, if you want to bring any offering forward, you may put it in our little wooden church. Peace, bring it all to peace. The 
the storm surrounding me, let it break at your name. Still, call the sea to still, the rage in me to still every wave. I will praise Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Breathe, call these bones to live. Call these lungs to sing once again. I will praise Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. You silence fear. Jesus, Jesus. You make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Your name is a light. That the shadows can't deny Your name cannot be overcome Your name is alive Forever lifted high Your name cannot be overcome Jesus, Jesus You make the darkness tremble Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, your name is a light that the shadows can't deny. Your name cannot be overcome. Your name is a light forever lifted high. Your name overcome. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus, you silence fear. Jesus, Jesus, you make the darkness tremble. Jesus, Jesus. Please stand as you're able for the offertory response. <coughs> what have we to offer? What have we to share? Coins from the cover. Blessed are you, Holy One, for all good things come from you. In bread and cup, you open heaven to us. Meet us at this table, that we receive what we seek and follow your Son, Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Receive the benediction. 
The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, amen. Please join us in the closing song, This Little Light of Mine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. This little light of mine, I'm gonna let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Hide this like no way, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide this like no way, I'm gonna let it shine. Hide this like no way. to love and serve the Lord. i